Hey, brother, welcome to another day of walking in wisdom from the book of Proverbs. And there's so much more that could be gleaned from this wisdom literature as you read it over and over again in your life. But I would be remiss if I didn't finish out this final week of our walk with the verse that we've all had in the back of our minds since we began. It is Proverbs chapter 27, verse 17. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. So that's our word actually for these last five days is the word sharpen from Proverbs 27, 17. But the question comes, how does a man sharpen another man? Well, he does it by looking at Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11, which says this, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a setting of silver. Now, I don't know what apples of gold and a setting of silver looks like, but obviously the one who wrote the proverb said, it's a beautiful thing. It's an expensive thing. It's a generous thing. It's a creative thing. It's a, it's a craft that a word that fits is something that is gorgeous and it lasts. And so that's our word for the day from Proverbs 25, 11 is the word fit. What kind of words, what kind of word could I say that is fit for the occasion, fit for a relationship, fit for my brother when I meet him, fit my, for my brother when I see him casually, or fit for my brother when I see him in a crisis. What can I say to my brother that would really be fit for the occasion? Well, listen to some other Proverbs that talk about the power of words. Proverbs twelve eighteen, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Or Proverbs 18, 21, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruits. I want to encourage you today, first of all, to change the content, if you need to, to change the content of your vocabulary. First of all, let's let's get away from sarcasm. You know, it is a form of humor, and in limited amounts, we can use it with a friend. But let's get away from that. Let's really listen, and then let's use words that are filled with grace, words that describe a man's character, words that build him up, words that respect who he is, words that bring some energy to the conversation and the relationship, and don't just wait to tell your story, but really build up a brother. Secondly, let's just change the motive of where our words come from, and the master class of this is found at the end of chapter 4 of Ephesians. Ephesians 4.29, we've referred to this before, but this is the PhD course in how to build up a brother. It says, let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion that it may give grace to those who hear. So I'd like you to think right now, what's something I can say to my brother that fits the occasion? You might have to rehearse it in your mind and it, it doesn't have to feel stilted or practiced, but think about what you could say by a text, by an email, or verbally in person to a brother that would build him up because it's fitting for the occasion. Let's do that today and sharpen one another. God bless you.